What is going on everyone? My name is Jeremy Daly and today we're going to be looking at the behind the scenes of last night's shoot. Now Victoria, you can wrap your right arm around his shoulder. <laughs> and bring her in for a kiss. Yes. Oh, you see that's the shot right there. I love that one. So let's open up Lightroom and get started. So right now, this is kind of the photo everyone's been asking me about. And really, out of camera, it's something special. I exposed for the shadows. Uh, usually, I should have I should have overexposed it a little more because I should have had them focus. Kind of, I should have had it like that in camera. But you know, the dynamic range of a D750 file is absurd. Because even if I over now, I, I, I could do that. So really, if you fuck up with a camera like mine, you're in the clear. So let's get started with the edit right now. I'm just gonna bring up the exposure a little bit just so they're a little more bright photo. I made the mistake of shooting at 1.4. I should have shot it around f4, even f8, because it is more of a landscape, but I generally always shoot at 1.4, why does this go? But I don't know why I forgot to change my settings. But the first thing that we're gonna do is bring down the highlights. Uh, for landscapes, I like to kind of max out the shadows and highlights, but for this, I'm gonna bring down the shadows quite a bit. I really want this photo to be moody. I want it to be very, uh, contrasty so I'm gonna bring up the whites for the highlight shadows whites and blacks I like it to be kind of an even exposure because then when we go down to the S curve That's when I like to actually bring in the custom contrast to the image. So let's start doing that now Now I'm probably gonna bring up the whites Definitely and then the lights I'm gonna bring up a little bit I kind of want to overexpose that dramatic skies and then the darks I'm definitely gonna bring down a bit and now we're going to edit the point curve. Now this is really awesome because once you click on it, you can move and build like a custom washed out look. So right now we're brightening up the darkest part of the images, which is washing out the shadows, that's what it's called. And then if you click on that again, then you can edit the S curve as if the shadows are starting at above. So it's it's a nice way to get kind of that more vintage look. It's more low contrast, but then you can actually like bring down the shadows as much as possible, but the lowest part of the, the darks are already up. So it's, so it's a nice way to have contrast with low contrast images, if that makes sense. Because if we didn't do that, I'll quickly do that. So if this was all the way at the bottom, you can see how much contrast that just added. So at the very bottom of the darks, like we could even bring it way up here and have a washed out look. Um, I like to bring it up a little bit. And now the most important part is your HLS color and luminance. This is really important for your photos because it's going to bring that custom look to your imagery and your brand's image. I like to focus on their skin tones first uh, because that's really important. So I'm going to, usually I just, I bring, I like to make their skin tones a little red and then I like to pull more saturation into the skin tones. So you're kind of customizing the photo a little bit. So right now they're a little too red. So I want to kind of make it orange again put some yellows back in it's a little too saturated my goal is to mute every color except for their skin tones i want them to pop i want the the orange skin tones to pop and then everything else to be muted a little bit so then after i can bring down the blue the sky and then the luminance is really where it comes to play if we zoom in again and so what i love doing is bringing up the luminance of their skin tones quite a bit um this is a bad example because of the landscape it's not my typical i'll bring up the saturation a little bit when I shoot up close, it's really easy to see these differences, but since it's a landscape photo, it's kind of harder to see. So right now, it's uh, not looking too crazy, too dramatic, it's kind of fair. Uh, it's not saturated enough, so I'm actually going to go back down and bring up the saturation of all of these. And then I'm just going to bring the saturation down of the blue. His, his shirt was a little too saturated. Bring that back up. All right, that's looking good. Now we're gonna go to our split toning. Split toning is really awesome because you're bringing color into the highlights and the shadows. So you can really customize your look. Now in the highlights, what we're gonna be adding color to is all the brights of the photos. So like the bright sky, kind of down in the lake, uh, a lot onto the dock. So if we go very extreme, you can see exactly what I just covered is now bright red, but we're not gonna go that extreme. I just, I think a very warm, uh, feel to that part and then the shadows is the opposite so like under the dock like in the darks of her dress and like kind of in the, in the grass a little bit and then I feel like adding a little bit of cold will be really good so and then you can kind of go to the hue and like move it along all the colors so you can kind of see what looks really good sometimes you know maybe green looks good and you know what green was actually kind of looking good and then you can bring up the saturation of that color 
shots and it just adds more into those highlights and then it's bring up saturate in the shadows and you can see the green kind of and then once you've found it you can actually change the balance between if it's more of the highlights showing or if it's more of the shadows with split toning you're just adding a little bit more personality into the photo to your brand so if you could always add uh warmth into the highlights and cold into the shadows now every time you post a photo like that it's just another thing like you're training everyone like oh that's definitely uh, your brand image so the next part is sharpening definitely want to up that sharpening since i screwed up my f stop and then i'm just gonna put the mask a little bit now if you hold option or alt and mask at the same time you control your mask of the, your sharpness so i like to highlight just kind of like the couple on them because then it's just sharpening around the couple and not the sky or anything so that's actually a really important tip because you're not going to screw up your sky a little bit and then lens correction is awesome i should have done that at the beginning of the photo that's usually the first thing that you should do and then since i made it brighter i'm going to bring down a little bit but we're going to add some radial filters and some gradient filters so the radial filter uh, if you put it around them their exposure is going to stay the same in the circle but everything around the circle is going to have like a gradient so like if i bring exposure down all the way you can tell it's very contrasty i'm going to bring it down a little bit i'm going to put warmth into everything else maybe a little magenta yeah up the saturation because now everything around the circle is going to be really saturated except for them too because i didn't want to screw up their skin tones so that's a sneaky way to get a really cool dramatic photo so now it's too dark so we're going to up the exposure a little bit so I'm gonna up the exposure so they're perfectly exposed. And now we're gonna add a gradient filter to the sky that's really gonna pop the sky. And I'm gonna show you a great tip that Lightroom just integrated, uh, I think in the winter. So right now the sky's a little too blue for my liking. So we're gonna warm it up a little bit. Um, I already put magenta, but magenta looks awesome in the sky. I'm gonna up the saturation because who doesn't like saturation in the sky? And then the biggest tip I have for you guys is go to dehaze. The haze really adds details in the sky and it's a really awesome tool that's important for your photos. So it's already on right now, but you see if you can, if you put the haze on all the way and then up it, like it just gets these crazy colors. I don't like, I don't like that look personally. I just like, see that's normal without the haze. A little bit of the haze in it, it's just, I don't know, more, more details, which is awesome. Makes it popping. Cool. And the last thing we're going to do to this photo is add some dodging and burning, just some quick little to add custom contrast into certain parts to bring uh, emphasis to them. So I'm just gonna add a little bit of dodging. Yeah, I just wanna burn a little bit of this grass around them so then the focal, the focus point is really just the couple and not, and then actually I'm gonna add it onto the dock as well around their feet because then you're not looking at this bright dock. Awesome, so that was the before and that's the after. So it's a pretty dramatic image. It's a uh, very vibrant, it's very contrasty, it's very moody, it's very dark. So I'm gonna have that preset below. If you guys have any questions how I got to this image, let me know in the comments below. And I hope you guys have a fantastic rest of your day. Be sure to sign up for free presets and we'll be offering a new product soon at the end of the month. Hope you guys have a fantastic rest of your day. My name is Jeremy Daly. I'm a wedding photographer and videographer. I like to travel for my job and it's a lot of fun. So follow the channel if you wanna see more of the end scenes of that and let me know if you have any questions. Have a great day guys, I'm surprised.